All right. So um, trigger your potential. Great. How? Uh, actually, to uh, come up with innovative idea, either in art or in business or in engineering, is not that easy. Everyone wants that, but it is not that easy. Um, sorry. Many things are needed for uh, generating innovative idea. There should be some knowledge, there should be motivation, there should be creativity, there should be analytical skills, a lot of stuff. So what about creativity? Do we have enough to trigger the innovation potential? Well, let us check. That's a famous creativity curve composed by a uh, uh, psychologist. His name was Antoine Ribot. He did it in the end of the 19th century, but it is pretty much uh, uh, alive today. So the vertical axis, it's a level of creativity or ability to accept creative ideas of others. And the horizontal one is age. So uh, you can see there is a very distinct peak shown here, what do you think? To what age does it belong? Five. Give me some. 25, that's what I did. I just named my age, right? <laughs> what else? Five, 10. Well, you suspect something is wrong. So in the end of the 19th century, it was 14 years old. Not long ago, uh, Department of Cognitive Sciences at MIT, where I work, did a similar research and they came up with age of 12. So it's kind of shifting to the left. Now, anyone 14 in the room? <laughs> Maybe 15? If not, then for all of us, as you can see, as far as creativity is concerned, is hopeless. <laughs> because we are far, far to the right. Why is that? Because I always thought that the older I become, the wiser I become, right? The more experienced and knowledgeable. Unfortunately, it's not the case. Uh, we think that kids have the happiest life ever because what? They eat, they sleep, and they play. That's it. What can be better? Wrong. Kids have extremely difficult life. They have no life experience, and practically every day they are in the situations that they don't know solutions for. They have to invent many times during the day. And they make mistakes, they fail, and they get very upset. That's why they cry so often. But if they got lucky and they generated a solution that worked for them, next time they come across a similar situation, they will use that solution. Because it worked once, they hope it would work again. So as we are getting older and more experienced, our library of those shrink-wrapped ready solutions is growing. Then we attended school, we started working, our library increased. So at some point we become so wise. The library is so big that for practically every problem we encounter, we can find a solution from our library of shrink-wrapped solutions, and we stop inventing. That's why we get rusty. Besides, I trust my library. If someone suggests a solution I don't have, I don't trust that. So that's why we have that uh, terrible situation with the creativity. But we need it for trigger that potential. W what should we do? Well, maybe there are some rules. You know, at least we will follow the rules and use some tools because tools usually increase productivity probability of success, but about what tools are we, going, are we talking about? Because to find an inventive or innovative idea, it's like finding a treasure on a treasure island. Just imagine you uh, go to that island and you offer a quest of a treasure. Where would you look? You can try, or if you are very lucky, you can hit the jackpot. You found the place and you dug it out. What about finding another one on another island? Fat chance. The second time, you will not do that. So, uh, of course, you can do like uh, Thomas Edison. 
That was his uh, probably the most important invention that people don't know about. You know, he invented a research institute. You can split the island into many, many pieces, you know, put a person on every piece, and in the long run, someone will find a treasure. But it requires time and money, and we don't have that. So how much easier would it be if we had a map? To look for a treasure with a map, much easier. But what map are we talking about if we need to generate an inventive idea? Is there such a map that can show me where invention is? Well, I have good news. Such a map exists. It is called the theory for inventive problem solving, or uh, is known under a very strange name, TRIZ. What's that? Well, that's an acronym, and it's an acronym from Russian. That's why you know it's a very weird word. But it stands for theory for inventive problem solving. The founder of it was Henry L. Schuller. Well, the name sounds not very Russian, but he was. Um, what he did, he thought, well, we have a lot of patents, and all of them are stored in the World Patent Collection. So if we analyze those patents and try to find some rules, some guidelines, how people invent, and if they are rather the rules, we can learn them, and everyone can become a Leonardo. You know, it will be like a, like a, like a map that can tell us where inventive solution might be. And uh, what he discovered was really a strange thing. He noticed that different products that surround us uh, follow the same kind of footprints in their development. That's strange. Uh, cars, computers, and toothbrushes, and uh, pointers, and uh, bottles, and knives, whatever. Everything follows the same footsteps. Difficult to believe that computers and cars and toothbrushes follow the same footprints, but that was true. That was the essence of his research. So if those trends kind of exist, then, you know, it's like a roadmap. Because I can take this the existing product, position where it is on the trend, and then can predict, I know, what the next invention will be. For example, there is one trend, just uh, to explain what it is. It says everything becomes more and more dynamized. It gets more degrees of freedom. Because if things can change according to the changing conditions of the environment, they can be more adjustable, more convenient. And there are steps how everything becomes more dynamized. First, it's a monolith. Then it is something with hinges. More hinges, so many hinges that there are elastic parts. And then liquid parts, gaseous parts, and fields. Think about pointers when you went to school. I'm sure that some of your teachers used pointers that were just one long wooden stick. Have you seen that? So that was one monolith pointer. Then, you know, some uh, more elegant solution, telescopic one. You know, it's a multiple hinge pointer. And then the technology was available, and the pointer acquired a field component, laser one. I'm afraid to push it, to, right? So, but you know what I mean, right? Um, uh, uh, something from core mechanics, ball bearings, regular ball bearings. Uh, what about uh, uh, fluid bearings? What about air bearings and magnetic bearings? Exactly the same line. Knives, or you can cut with solid blade, you can cut with a string, you can cut with water jet, you can cut with air jet, you can cut with laser. You know, exactly same trend. Uh, what else? Beds in which you sleep. Uh, yeah, something more interesting, toothbrushes, because you are experts, you use it every day many times. Um, totally monolith, well, just the usual uh, toothpick. Uh, toothbrush with elastic bristles, something a spongy toothbrush, totally elastic, and then uh, a water pick or mouthwash, or uh, uh, something uh, with gaseous component, that's what dentists use, uh, and then something with the field. 
well, dentists are dentists, but uh, when I saw the trend, I thought, well, there should be a toothbrush that uses some gaseous part. The trend prompts me that. So I started looking, and I found, it's on the slide, but I just brought it with me. Uh, it is called ionic toothbrush. No moving parts, just a battery and the rod that slides into the head. So when you're brushing, the battery uh, through the rod ionizes air around bristles, and ions of air make plug totally loose. You can remove it with your finger, with your finger but with bristles, you brush up 100% of plug. So there is a gaseous component there that participates in plug removal. And then, of course, with fields, it may be uh, ultrasound, vibration, and uh, we can think about other fields. Look, the same trend exactly. The beds in which we sleep, like everything, follow the same trend. Regular one, uh, have you ever seen a camp bed with many hinges that you can uh, have at home for guests or something? Total elastic hammock. Have you heard about water beds? What about inflatable beds with gaseous component? And beds with a field, you know, there are in the United States, they were popular long ago, vibrating ones. But now there are those, uh, you know, with the massaging capabilities, uh, beds with a thermal field, so you can heat it up before you jump in, and so on. And there are beds with electromagnets there for in improving the blood circulation. There are no beds when we would levitate in the field yet, but they already levitate small frogs and insects. So maybe in the future you will be just sleeping comfortably levitating in magnetic field. Right? So, Everything evolves uh, according this, uh, according to the trend, this trend, and there are many of them. There are trends that tell me how systems become more controllable, how the system merge with each other, you know, for different aspects of product development. So that is why, if I need to invent something to come up with this great idea, statistically, because these trends work for big numbers of engineering systems. The, and statistics is science, is science. So I just take my product, position on the trend, and I know what the next uh, invention might be. Um, for the toothbrush, I need to use fields, right? All right, uh, whatever. Uh, ultrasound is already used, vibration field, maybe chemical one. For example, uh, you know, um, I put some photocatalytic um, uh, paste on my teeth and our UV radiation, it removes plug chemically or something like that. I can apply the same trend not for the whole product, but just for the handle. Monolith handle, handle with hinges, and then uh, total elastic one, and then handle with a field. I have not found a product yet, but I thought, what could it be? Uh, I usually have a problem brushing teeth from inside. You know, you need to be really skillful. So what about if the toothbrush consists of two halves, and the second half is just behind your teeth, and they are connected magnetically. So when you brush uh, the front side, you know, the magnetic, the, the second brush is sliding somewhere at the back. Just be careful not to swallow it. But otherwise, you know, that would work. So um, uh, this way, you know, we have not like a map, but something close. You know, it gives me a, a, a much more narrow area where a powerful inventive idea might be. So, but, okay, I can invent a lot of things. Will the market take it? Because uh, uh, just uh, uh, generate ideas is not that I want. I want, you know, successful product. But I can use the same trend for asking people if they are ready to buy it, if they like it. And if they say yes, if the voice of the customer confirms, okay, I can do that. For example, there is another trend that the system become more and more controllable, smarter. Look, uh, uncontrolled um, intersection. The drivers control the situation. There is no system that controls it. Then traffic light. It works according to a fixed program. Then there may be some uh, external intervention on top of that. After a football game or a concert, the policeman can join. And then the system is smart. It controls everything itself. 
like Georg said, okay, the traffic light somehow identifies the intensity of traffic and changes the algorithm. If there is a lot of traffic in one direction, then uh, you know, uh, it gives uh, this direction more time. So the system becomes, becomes self-controlled. Good. What about toothbrush? Right now, nothing like that. You know, uh, with the regular one, it's me who controls the situation. Well, there are brushes that brush, work for three minutes, and then stop. You want more? Push button, there will be another cycle. There is a kind of, a, you know, externally controlled. When you press the bristle to the teeth, it works. You let it go, it stops. What about smart toothbrush that controls things itself? For that, it should be able to identify if there is plaque left on teeth and brush the places where it can identify plaque. Would you buy such a toothbrush with a guaranteed plaque removal and it doesn't brush just everywhere, but only the places that are still dirty? Of course I would, right? You know, uh, such a, a toothbrush with a sensor that identify plaque has not been developed yet, but it may be a pretty successful product like a gold mine for those uh, for Procter & Gamble or other companies that develop the product. So uh, right now, this theory for inventive problem solving, it has a number of tools. And like pieces of Lego, you can connect them and they can be used for different types of projects. Improving products and processes, different patent issues, uh, uh, forecasting, and so on. Just for different type of product, different set of tools, you know, like on that picture. Um, this is just to impress you. These are the companies that intensively use threads, and you can see the best names there, and Siemens and Samsung and LG and General Electric and, and Intel, very, very different areas. So that's a proof that it works, you know, pretty well. So, um, um, like anything else, to trigger your potential, you had to learn how to read, you had to learn how to write, you had to learn how to speak, and it is possible to learn how to generate inventive ideas. There are formula, there is kind of rules for that, so everyone can become a Leonardo. That is why you know, I want to encourage you not to sit and wait and procrastinate you know, without any deadline, but rather you know, familiarize yourself with the possibility and trigger your innovation uh, potential. All right? Thank you very much.